All right, here is our algorithm before for mean. We're going to change this to work for Max. Max, as it turns out, is the name of my son because I just find this stuff really important. So in a very deep sense, the thing that we're computing is, is functionally equivalent to the mean. It's, a, it's really a very, very similar kind of calculation that's happening. But the details are going to end up being a little bit different. So we're going to start off, instead of uh, the total of zero, we'll start off with the, the max so far being whatever the first element of the list is. And then, oh, so we should make sure that we don't compute that one twice. Then we're going to consider all the other elements of the list. And if the element that we're currently considering beats the max so far, then we have a new max so far. There can be only one. And that's what we do. We just apply this test to every element of the list, keeping track of the max so far. And then when we're done, the max so far is the max so far of everything. Woohoo! Now, perhaps not surprisingly, Python, you don't want to do this. You don't want to write your own max routine because Python already has one. But just as before, you have to be really careful. When you use things like max in your programs, keep in mind that this is a linear time operation. It's not constant time.